Welcome back to Igniting Inspiration. My name is Leah O'Donnell. I am the Literacy Coordinator in Berwyn South District 100, and today you're going to see a lesson within a reading workshop in a second grade here at Irving Elementary School. Um, what we do in our, our district is we have common plan times, and so the team and their literacy coach get together and they plan for a reading workshop. And so this lesson was planned with Courtney O'Connor and the second grade team and they have some very specific things that they plan for. The first is duration. Is this content that they're gonna teach, is it able to be taught in about eight to 10 minutes? Um, if the answer is yes, they go forward. If not, it, it becomes an actual lesson. And so this team with Hannah um, in the classroom that you're gonna see decided that this is a mini lesson. And so the next thing that they did is they intentionally planned for the four pieces that most mini lessons have. The first piece that most many lessons have is a connection. And so that's where you would talk to the kids about what you've previously learned and how it connects with what you're going to learn. The next uh, step in a mini lesson is an, a teaching point. And so that's where the teacher is really clear and explicit about what they are gonna be teaching the children. And they actually do some modeling or demoing of what that would look like while reading. Um, the next step, would be an active engagement. It's kind of like gradual release. And so after you've done the demo, you give the children some time to practice. And in this case, the active engagement has an excerpt of a mentor text with some turning and talking. It could look like that. It could also look like students talking into the air. It could look like a student taking a stop and jot. Um, lots of different things, but just practicing some of the work that was just modeled for them. And then the last piece is the link. And this is a really important piece because readers do things all the time, not just when they're on the carpet with their classmates. And so the link is something that reminds children that today and every day, a reader would do this type of, of work. And in this case, um, you're gonna see that she connects it to their independent reading. The other thing that I always like to look for is a good use of a mentor text. So a mentor text is different than a read aloud, whereas a read aloud, you've read it aloud um, for the first time. A mentor text is something that students have already explored and know the characters and the plot and the settings really well, and so it helps them anchor the new ideas. And so in this particular case, uh, you'll see that Hannah is using a series that they've been reading aloud, and she's using an excerpt. So today you're gonna see reading workshop in a second grade with Hannah from Irving. So something I noticed about the Lucy curriculum is that it's very, like, broken up, like skills that us as adult readers don't see like ourselves using, they break the lessons very explicit. Like the lesson I was teaching that day was about how characters act the same over and over again through the series. And so I just kept repeating that, like this is across the series, we're going to see them act over and over again in the same way. And if we focus on those parts, that's where we can tell who they truly are on the inside. I chose those books and I think the kids can really tell when you're interested in a book. It's so obvious to them if you're faking it or if you actually enjoy the book that you're reading. And so when I chose the Hounsie and Katina books, I love the way that the characters are, their relationship, the way that they act, and I think the kids pick up on that. And also with the books that they're reading independently, I get excited about sharing a new book with them. And so they just feed off of the teacher's excitement. And I think like anything the teacher like buys into or anything the teacher kind of like blesses it's they they buy into that too especially when you build like a love of reading in your class and you show them that you're a reader they want to know about books that you love so right now before we start i want us to remind ourselves what we already know about houndsley and katina what have we learned so far in the past two books so i want you to turn to your face partner Partner A, you're going to start and you're going to tell about Houndsley. One or two inside traits you know about Houndsley. Partner B, when they're done, you're going to start sharing about Katina. All right? Start. A lot of times, I'll, so I, I have them turn and talk and then I listen in and then I, I like, can hear a bunch of different groups and I'll just, I don't need like six of them to raise their hand and tell me the same thing. So I'll either just say, oh, I heard this group talking about, or I was talking to this student and we talked about this. Sometimes I'll take one hand, but I'm not going to call on all the hands that come up because it's not, that's not the point of it, like as long as they had the conversation with their turn and talk. And that's another thing that um, we practice a lot is like 
I talk about a conversation like a balloon, and you want to keep your turn and talk uh, in the air like a balloon, because if your conversation hits the ground, it, the balloon pops. So I was talking to Javion, and he was talking about Houndsley. And the first thing he mentioned was that Houndsley is very calm. Did anyone else say that? Right. Houndsley is very calm. Okay. And then I went over and I was talking to Isabella and Ryan, and Isabella mentioned that Katina, she, she worries a lot. She's a bit of a worrier. We learned that in our first book, like when there was the big snowstorm and she was worrying so much about what they were gonna do. Who else mentioned that she's a worrier? She worries a lot. All right. So today we are going to dive in to the last chapter in Hansley and Katina, Plink and Plunk. Yes, Flora? Uh, she was also worried when on the computer. Right, that's another time you, you saw that. So we've seen it again. Well, that brings me to what we're going to talk about today. So today, we are going to pay attention to how the characters across a series show things they act the same in book after book. And we started seeing that. And so today, we're going to pay even more attention to ways that they act the same over and over again. And when we do that, we can start to say, they've done that before. They're doing it now. That must be who they really are. That must be how they act most of the time. So we're gonna read this last chapter. And this time, partner A, you're gonna listen for Katina. And when you start hearing something that Katina is doing that she's done before, or acting in a way that reminds you of a way that she's acted before, you're gonna show me a silent thumb. So partner A, if you're on Katina, show me a silent thumb right now. So your job is right now listening. We, we know Katina's a worrier. She's worried before. So if you hear her start doing that again, I want you to show me a silent thumb. And partner B, you're gonna focus on Houndsley. And when you hear Houndsley either being calm or helpful, I want you to show me a silent thumb. And we'll talk, stop and talk about what they're doing. When has she talked when she's nervous before? When has Katina talked when she's nervous before? Turn and tell your partner when Katina has talked when she's nervous before. Which one? Over. Face partner. Two times so far where Katina has talked over, been so talkative over and over again. And here she's talking again. But now, what have we learned about her, about her talking? What did they tell us? Tristan? She talks about when she's scared. When she's nervous. So we know Katina has talked a lot during the snow snowstorm, and she talked a lot on the canoe. And now we know why. So now when we keep reading more and more about Katina, if we notice her getting nervous, we know what she's going to do. We can predict how she's going to act. She's going to start talking and talking and talking, because that's what she does when she's nervous. All right, I'm gonna keep going. But today, as you all read in your Stop and Jack books, you might have a new Katie Wu book or a new Field Trip Mysteries, and I chose a book where A is that the main character again on your Mayan. I want your Stop and Jacks to be focused on how your character is acting the same over and over. What have they done before that they're doing in this new book that you've read? What behaviors are they repeating, or how are they acting, or how do they treat people that you've seen before? And those will tell us some of their inside traits, what they're really like. Hi. 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 It was so cute at the end when they start cheering, when I tell them that they're going to get a new book. When they, I thought it was so cute. I was like, yeah. Yeah, I love that about second grade.